let's look at another example of extreme value theorem. So I have the function f of x equal to x to the 4 thirds minus 2 x to the 2 thirds minus 3. We're in the interval from minus 8 to 8, and we want to find all maximums and minimums in that region. So what's our procedure? Three things. First, we want to find all the critical points of f that are in the region. So critical point, remember, we take the derivative. Critical points occur where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Second step, we're going to take those critical points, we're going to take the endpoints, we're going to evaluate our function at each of those points. Then last step, we'll compare all the values that come out. There's where you find your maximums and your minimums. Now, let's take a look at our answer before we actually get to taking derivatives. So, what do we have? Here's a picture of our graph on our region. So we'll note the maximums are going to occur at the endpoints. The minimums are going to occur at these points here where we have horizontal tangent lines. So that's going to be where the derivative is equal to zero. But you'll also note we have another critical point at zero. Right there we're going to have a local maximum, meaning it's not a maximum for the whole function in the region, but if we just look at a tiny enough neighborhood, it's going to be in the maximum right there. So we're expecting two critical points for zero, one critical point for not defined. Let's take the derivative of f of x. So x to the 4 thirds, 4 thirds comes down, we subtract 1, I get x to the 1 third. For x to the 2 thirds, 2 thirds comes down, we subtract 1, gives me x to the minus 1 third. And then our derivative is just 4 thirds, x to the 1 third, minus 4 thirds, x to the minus 1 third. Now, before I can work with that, we should clean things up a little bit. I don't like the x to the minus 1 third, so we'll just pretend our function is over 1, then we'll multiply top and bottom by x to the 1 third. So what's going to happen? When I do that, we'll have a 4 thirds out in front, I'm going to have x to the 2 thirds minus 1 over x to the 1 third. To find where the critical points for the derivative equal to 0, we set the numerator equal to 0. So I'm going to get x to the 2 thirds minus 1 is 0. x to the 2 thirds equals 1. Cubing both sides gives me x squared equals 1, or x equal to plus minus 1. We need to be careful here with that cube root. If I took x to the 2 thirds and raised both sides to x to the 3 halves, you'll note we'll only get x equal to 1 for a solution. We'll miss the x equal to minus 1. So we need to be careful there. OK, how about the critical point where f prime is undefined? In this case, we only need to check the denominator. So the denominator will be equal to 0 when x to the 1 third is 0, or x equal to 0. So we get three critical points for our function. And all critical points live in the region of interest, from minus 8 to 8. I take our three points. I take our endpoints. We evaluate the function to each of those. OK, we do so. Now, just a note on, say, f of minus 8. We need to take minus 8 to an exponent. So let's just recall how we do that correctly. If I have minus 8 to the 4 thirds, we do the cube root first and then raise what comes out to the fourth power. So if I have minus 8 to the 1 third, OK, if I take a cube root of a negative number, I get a negative number out. So if I took a square root of a negative number, there's no answer cube root of a negative number, I definitely get something back. So we're looking at the cube root of minus 8. So it'll have a negative sign, and then I just have to worry about what the cube root of 8 is. Cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, 2 cubed gives me 8. So if I rewrite that, 8 to the 1 third equals 2. Then I take the fourth power of that, I get a 16. So the minus sign is going to go away anyway. All right, and then you can work out the rest. So minus 8 to the 2 thirds, same procedure. We compare all the values now. So the maximum is going to occur in this list. So the maximum is going to be 5, and it's going to occur at the endpoints, x equal to plus minus 8. So we notice our graph already told the tale there for the maximums. Maximums occur at the endpoints. How about the minimums? We see our minimums are going to occur at plus minus 1 with a minimum value of minus 4. 
take a look at the graph, we note our minimums are happening where we have these horizontal tangent lines at plus minus one, and we already noted that that's where the derivative is equal to zero. How about the point we're not using? Well, that's gonna be f of zero equal to minus three. You'll note it's neither a maximum or minimum for the entire function on this region, but if we looked at it up close, it's gonna be a local maximum. Also note, the derivative there does not exist. That's because if you take a look at this, it's got a little spike there or a vertical tangent line happening. Either way you look at that, you're not gonna get a derivative at x equal to zero.